Hello, and welcome to the MS for Mama podcast. I'm your host, Abby Halberstadt, happy wife, mama to 10, Bible-believing Christian. And on today's show, I want to chat about one of the most common FAQs that I have gotten ever since I got on the internet 12 years ago. And no, it's not, why do you have so many kids, or do you know what causes that, or are you having any more, which probably are my top three. But it's almost as common, and it is this question. How do you do it all? Well, goodness, that is such a loaded question, right? If you've ever been asked it by a friend or an acquaintance or someone at church, you know that your brain immediately grinds to a halt as you think, okay, but what's the definition of it all? And how do I do? What what exactly is the it all they think I'm doing? And I, I don't know. I mean, what, where, how? You, your brain just kind of shuts down because it's such an all-encompassing kind of explain your life to me kind of question. And I know what it means. And sometimes I think it's coming from a place of passive aggression. And sometimes it's coming from a place of looking for faults. But a lot of times it's just coming from a place of someone who is feeling overwhelmed or who feels like their systems are not working for them and they're looking at your highlight reel on Facebook. And again, this doesn't just happen to bloggers. This doesn't just happen to authors or Instagrammers. This happens to people that we see going through the grocery store seemingly with perfectly well-behaved children because, hey, maybe they have great systems and maybe they're working for them that day. And I'm not saying that systems don't work, but maybe that was just the perfect time for their children to behave well and they'd just gotten up from naps and they were well-rested and your kids aren't. And we've talked about this trap of comparison that it's so easy to fall into and to compare your postpartum struggles to someone else's well-rested successes and how that's not wise and that the Bible makes it clear that we are to use the Lord's generosity and his grace and his commandments as our standards, not what other people are accomplishing, right? However, It is easy to get our eyes off of the prize of living for the one true God and of doing everything as unto the Lord and look over and say, oh man, maybe I should be doing a little more of that or how is she accomplishing this when I can't fill in the blank? And so I've touched on this concept several times in the past, but when I'm asked a question like, how do you do quote it all, whatever it all means in that person's head. It's usually followed up by something like, do you have help? And I have an entire chapter in the Emma's for Mama book about how we should all have help of some kind in an ideal world. We should all have someone on whom we can rely, whether that is our husband, whether that is older children that we have poured into who can accomplish some of the same tasks that we used to have to do all by ourselves. So there are going to be different seasons of life that provide different amounts of relief, depending on where you are, how many children you have, their ages, how much effort you've put into training them, how, um, you know, their ability levels, um, given their personalities, their desire to help. Also, whether you have family close by, whether you have the extra income to hire help, whether you're able to swap babysitting with neighbors or, you know, the list could go on and on and get more and more creative in ways that we could recruit help. But we tend to, and I talk about this in that chapter, have a mindset of either kind of being superwoman, I am a failure if I don't quote, do it all by myself, or victimhood mentality, which says that unless my village comes and saves me, I really can't be expected to fill in whatever blank it is, laundry. And so it's a weird dichotomy. And again, like I talked about with the body image episode, so often the truth of scripture brings us to a centered, reasonable approach, which is to say that I might've just moved cross country from my family that I've lived with and around for 20 years, and I find myself completely alone, and I don't have the quote-unquote village, I don't have the support system that I had before, and I could either fall into self-pity and say, without those things, I can't, Lord, I can't, or we can say, your grace is sufficient, and your power is made perfect in my weakness, and you tell me this, and you tell me that you're never going to leave me or forsake me, And you tell me that I can do all things, be content in all things, accomplish all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
So for a period at least, I'm going to have to march forward in tiny little shuffling steps of faith and say, God, I need you every hour. Jesus, I need thee. And trust that you are going to be sufficient, that when I am not enough, which is always that Jesus is. And that may sound very Susie spiritual, and it doesn't sound like it gets the laundry done, but there is an amazing spiritual that translates into tangible force that meets us. And it's the Holy Spirit when we cry out to God and help that can get us through the next hour of chores, that can get us through that bedtime routine that feels so draining, that can get us up in the morning. Um, just something very silly as a, as a, almost a side note, but an example of this. Woke up this morning, not enough sleep, feeling super drained and groggy. And I've talked about having back pain and I'm still in the process of figuring out kind of where that's coming from, how to treat it. It's diminished some, but it's still there. And whenever I t start teaching my classes, I definitely feel like my mobility is limited, like I'm feeling that pain. And this morning I started teaching my fitness class, which is a weight training class called Body Pump, and just wasn't feeling it. And the music got going and I was frustrated with the fact that I didn't have the level of mobility that I wanted to. But that beat, you know, it was just kind of some upbeat, silly, happy song with a steady beat. And I felt that start to lift my adrenaline levels and at first I was being self-pitying and saying like, I can't bend as much as I would like to. And then just this thought kind of overtook my brain of, I get to come here and my body works well enough for me to be standing here right now. And these people are relying on me to give them a good class. And I'm just thankful. I don't know. Just in that moment, the Holy Spirit just put this wash of joy over me that really was the joy of the Lord. It was inexplicable. Moments before I had been frustrated with my with my limitations. And then in that moment, I was really enjoying myself. And I don't know that my deadlift got any deeper, but my appreciation for what my body was capable of doing in that moment came from the Lord. And I don't mean to be cheesy when I say that. It's just the truth. And they were probably wondering why all of a sudden I started smiling in the middle of class, but that was why. Um, so genuine help from the Lord and his Holy Spirit can actually affect change in our physical abilities and our motivation to be able to do things. So I just want to encourage you, if you don't have your village yet, I don't even like the term village. Um, it's a little creepy to me, honestly. If you don't have your support system, if your family isn't who you would like them to be, or they're just not close enough to be who would you would like them to be in terms of help. And you feel like your options for productivity and for childcare help and for moral support are really limited in this season of your life. I just really want to encourage you that the joy of the Lord truly can be your strength. It can change your mindset. It can change what you are physically capable of, what you are emotionally capable of, what you are spiritually capable of. It's really kind of amazing. So I'm going to preface everything I say with that, that when I'm talking to you about the help that I do currently have, which I have not had in the past for long periods and how grateful I am for it and what it allows me to do that I still believe, as I've always said, that the Lord has us in seasons for very specific reasons. And I didn't mean to make that rhyme or sound like it should have been put on a cross stitch pillow, but it's the truth. He has us in the seasons that we're in for very specific reasons. And sometimes those aren't revealed for a long time. Sometimes we may never fully understand why he makes us walk through the seasons that we're in. I still don't know that I fully get why we are in the middle of this flood process and remediation process and living out of our house and figuring out how to renovate in the middle of one of the busiest seasons of our lives. But I know based on messages that people have sent me saying this whole process and watching it has been what has convinced me that you really do believe that heart is not the same thing as bad and that the Lord really is sustaining you. And it's been helping me. Even people that have messaged me and said, you won't believe it, but I watched you walk through this and um, I was encouraged that that you were still saying that God is good because he is. And then our house flooded. And I know that had he not brought me to your page and had me watch that, that my response would have been different, that I would not have felt like I had someone to relate to, that I would have felt more alone. And that in and of itself, honestly, makes this whole process worth it. To get to be an encouragement to others, to weep with those who weep, to mourn with those who mourn, is such a privilege, even though I don't 
always like the circumstances that lead me to it. And I genuinely mean both of those things. I can both not like it and both be grateful for the opportunity to be a blessing and an encouragement to someone. So we may not always understand the reasons for the seasons that we're in. And I have an entire podcast about what it looks like to be yearning to be used by the Lord in a certain way, or maybe less altruistically, less spiritually, just to be yearning to be out of a hard season. And that's not where the Lord has you yet. And then you're able to look back 10 years from then and say, wow, if I hadn't walked through that, I wouldn't have the maturity to handle what he's giving me now. If I hadn't walked through that, I wouldn't be able to empathize with my sister-in-law who's going through the same miscarriage process. And I would never have wished that I would have gone through miscarriage. And yet I'm so grateful that since I did, I'm able to support her and to empathize with her and to understand truly this hard road that she's walking. So if you're thinking, what does this have to do with doing it all, Abby? I think that I want to to really undergird anything I say next with and any definitions of doing it all with the understanding that the hope of the Lord is where we're supposed to be going. He is our strength and shield. He truly is enough for the practical things, for the times when we find ourselves walking through isolation and need a friend that will never leave us through the times when our spouse has lost his job or abandoned us, even God forbid, and we find our capacity really diminished. And I've talked about this idea of seasons of diminished capacity before, but I'll just recap by saying that there are times when we are rocking and rolling. We have the support that we need. Our health is good. Our children are sleeping through the night. Maybe we don't have kids yet. And we are, you know, not yet in that season where your, your productivity and your time is really limited and it's dependent upon naps and bedtimes, and good moods, and, you know, moments of free play where they're all happy. Um, Maybe we're in one of those really smooth seasons, and we really feel like we can get a lot done. And then the Lord has us enter a season where nothing is lining up like it was before. And we find ourselves really frustrated with our limited capacity. We find ourselves frustrated that our productivity is diminished. We find ourselves frustrated that we thought we were all that, that it was due to us, that things were getting done so well and we were staying so on top of things. But really, it was the season that we were in and the fact that things were smooth. And then when things get rocky, we often find that we have to be willing to open our hands, take them off of those things that we want to accomplish and say, Lord, I can't do it all. Maybe I never could. In fact, for sure, I never could. But it's less than it used to be. But that doesn't make me less in your eyes. Even if other people are looking at us like, hey, you used to show up and volunteer at all of these things. You used to bake fresh bread. You used to garden. You used to fill in the blank with whatever it is. And you're not doing those things anymore. We are not performing for people. We are only serving God and loving God and loving neighbors and serving neighbors. And I want to emphasize that our neighbors, first and foremost, are the children and husband that the Lord has given us, if that's the situation that we're in. So the doing it all needs to come first from a heart of wanting to love God and serve God and love our neighbors and serve our neighbors, starting with those who live in the same house with us. So I understand, going way back to that question, and this seeming rabbit trail that I've started it with, that the question is coming from a place of someone who is seeing something that I'm doing that they're not doing, and therefore they would like the formula. Maybe their season of life is completely different than mine. Maybe their giftings are completely different than mine. Maybe their personality is completely different than mine. And so they're like, this is just not working for me. So how do I make this line up? And again, I've had a whole podcast where I talk about this. So if you want to dive more deeply into that, you can with that podcast. But the number one answer I always give back, which I'm sure is somewhat a frustrating one, is, of course, I don't do it all. There is no one who does. Because we have to define our terms. If by it all, you mean everything possible for a woman to do well, Ain't nobody doing that. Now, my good, good friend, Jennifer Flanders, whom I've referenced several times before, she has a fantastic blog. She has a fantastic podcast. 
it, I've said this before on another podcast that she's probably the closest person to Superwoman, if we're going to use that term, which I don't love that term. I think it's it's a really weighty kind of heavy title to place on someone who is just trying to live for the glory of God. So anytime someone calls someone else a Superwoman, I I, I don't know if the word is cringe, but I I feel for them because you're like, man, that's a, that's a big mantle to live up to. Um, but Jennifer Flanders is very talented in handicrafts. She's devoted to her family. She gets dinner on the table. She's organized. I mean, I could just go through the whole list that would make her sound so, so good. And she is so, so good. And she is truly devoted and self-disciplined and all those things. But are there areas in which even she could improve or doesn't have natural giftings or doesn't have a lot of interest, right? Because we're not going to do it all, all the things that we could do if we don't even feel called to them or if we don't even like them. Now, let me clarify that there are lots of things that the Lord calls us to that we don't have a natural affinity for because his power is made perfect in our weakness and he loves to show off through the things that we stink at. You think about Peter and the fact that he was a fisherman. He was not well-spoken. He had an anger problem. He wasn't well-read. He wasn't well-educated. And yet he becomes one of the foremost preachers of the gospel in the New Testament. And first and second Peter are beautifully written and realized books of scripture that we hold dear to our hearts to this day. And that's amazing. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. So I don't want to simply say that we are limited in the quote, it all that the Lord is going to require us to do by our natural giftings or our personalities. However, I also think that the Lord gives us those things to show us the avenues in which we can invest. So a Jennifer Flanders or my mom, who is very talented and accomplished and hardworking and whom I admire so greatly, or Elizabeth Elliot or Ruth Bell Graham or someone who maybe isn't a Christian but is in the secular sphere that's making lots of money and juggling lots of balls in the air with business and um, success and fame and all those things. We could look to them and say, whoa, that's so impressive. How do I have what you have? And I think we're asking the wrong question when instead we should be asking Lord, what do you have for me to do today? So the internet makes that question, I think, a little bigger because like it or not, unless I do a day in the life of when I wake up in the morning and put on clothes and brush my teeth and make my breakfast, which I've done days in the life before, I think they're helpful. I think they're informative. I think they're kind of entertaining. It's, it's kind of fun to watch how other people just do their daily stuff, they can be good. But unless I were to do that all day, every day, you wouldn't get a full idea of just how many mundane things are going on in my day, just like they're going on in yours, just like they're going on in your really accomplished, organized friend over there that you feel intimidated by, just like they're going on even in a celebrity's life. She still has to put her shoes on. She still has to get groceries. Now, they probably are delivered to her. Maybe a private chef makes all of her meals. So, yeah, they're not just like we are. I get it. However, there are certain things that are going to be baseline that everybody has to get done in a day. And then you start building your layers. So, one layer for me is that I'm a homeschool mom. And I have a lot of kids. And I have a lot of different grades to cover. And I have a lot of different personalities to interact with. So how do I do that? Well, for me, one thing that I have done um, since I was a mom of six, I believe is the correct number, is that we have hired my mom to come two days a week to help with homeschooling so that if I need an extra pair of hands to help somebody with handwriting or their um, language arts or their math, or I need an extra person to go sit with the kindergartner and help him with his letters while I'm working with a middle group of kids on history, or if I'm doing spelling words with another group of kids, because family style learning is where it's at, y'all. If you want to know the how do you do it all to homeschooling, it is getting an age range together that can learn similar things, and then you can customize a little bit. But kind of that school bus get from one child to the next in their math, answer a question, come back and be available for any questions that go forward and or family style learning are really helpful when you have a wide range of ages or just lots of kids. And so that would be one suggestion from a homeschooling perspective. 
that you don't necessarily have to have a kid in Texas history in American history and world history. And you have to, you know, get all of those going at once. But we've hired my mom and she is there to be an extra pair of hands to load the dishwasher. So help that you can hire is amazing. Help that you can swap is amazing. Help that you can just ask for from someone in your neighborhood, maybe an elderly woman who is willing to come and sit with your small children while you work with older children if you're a homeschool mom or just help you in any capacity. Maybe she loves to garden and she could pour her wealth of knowledge into you as you are starting a little baby garden and don't know what you're doing. Amazing. So I'm a huge fan of saying yes to help. I struggle with it sometimes, but over the years, the Lord has shown that to be pride. And so typically if someone wants to help and I'm not twisting their arm or being an imposition to them and asking, I am going to accept it or ask. So there's a couple of ways, you know, get, get help if you can have it. And I talk about this in that chapter about having help and it was for mama. But if you can't have help to hire or to get raise help in your home, um, You may not be able to do it all, but many hands make light work and you can get to a lot more if you can teach your children how to be a blessing to your home by giving them an example of diligence in doing laundry and folding and putting away. I've talked about one of my favorite mama hacks is reading aloud to my kids while they fold laundry. They are entertained while they do something simple with their hands. Then we all scatter and put the clothes away in our respective rooms. And it's also educational. And so it's a win-win. They love it. We get something accomplished. I enjoy reading to them. It's great. So that's, that's another way of quote, doing it all is combining tasks, multitasking in a way that doesn't fracture your brain. So yes, more than one thing is getting done at that time, but I'm not doing the kind of thing where I'm trying to answer a DM while talking to a child about math, while also stirring a pot and potentially, you know, just not really doing any of those things well. So finding areas where you can multitask in a way that doesn't make your brain hurt is always a good idea in my mind. Um, another thing like listening to podcasts that are educational or helpful while you're doing something, putting one earbud in so that you can still hear kids or listen for a baby to wake up from a nap and, um, voice memoing with your best friend encouragement. Maybe she lives on the other side of the country, but you can Marco Polo her or send her a voice memo and at the same time be cleaning the bathroom sinks. I'm a huge fan of things like that, where you're receiving encouragement or education or giving encouragement or education while still getting something accomplished. That's another great way to quote, unquote, get it all done. And again, we've started with the concept that there is no such thing as getting it all done. There are only the things that have been put in your God-given lane that he is clearly requiring and asking of you to fulfill well and to do as unto him. And if you're doing those things, And even if the season is a time when those things are greatly diminished, then you are doing it all that he is requiring you to do. Even if it doesn't look like what your neighbor is doing, and even if it doesn't look like the doing it all that the world applauds. Now, I am able to do more now in a business sense than I have ever been able to do before because the Lord has provided something for me that I have prayed for for years Whenever I've been asked the question, do you have help? I've always talked about having my mom two days a week, and then she's generally helpful. Otherwise, um, our in-laws are kind and are involved in our kids' lives as well. And we're able to have some contact with them, though they live a little bit farther away and it's not as common. Um, I have friends that I am able to ask for assistance from, but until the last year of my life, even with being on the internet for 12 years, I have not had the kind of professional help that I needed to be able to take some basic tasks off of my plate, which freed up my brain so much this past year. And what I mean by that is if you sent me an email, I was answering it. If you sent me a DM, I was answering it. If there was a technical problem, either Sean or I was getting to it. Um, If an order had to be sent, you know, it was going to be either Sean or or I, um, if, oh my goodness, I could just go on and on. And so as you can imagine, rather than doing it all, there were a lot of things that were left undone or 
took forever for me to get to them or were being dropped or were being forgotten or, you know, just were frustrating me because there is only so much you can accomplish in one day when it comes to any task, but especially when it's the kind of task that takes concentrated effort where you can't multitask at the same time. So I don't do well answering emails when I have a small child plucking on my sleeve. I'm likely to type what I'm trying to tell him instead of what I'm trying to tell my client or my customer, right? And so there are times when it's not wise to multitask. And so I've just had to let so many things go. And that's been fine because that's the season that the Lord has had me in. But I have prayed consistently and faithfully for many years for a unicorn, for the kind of person or people that could come into my life that would love to work for MS for Mama, that would be passionate about our ministry to women and mothers particularly, that would love God's word, that would um, have a great working relationship with me and personal relationship with me. And it just didn't seem to be that the Lord had those people for me for years and years. And he seemed to be asking me still to either do it all, meaning be the person to do those tasks that were kind of onerous to me or to let it go. And so that was the answer very clearly. Do what you can do with the time and the energy that you have and let the rest go. And so I am facing, I shouldn't say facing because that sounds negative. I'm looking forward to, and that's the truth, our book launch party for Heart is Not the Same Thing as Bad which is on Saturday. And I love that I got to say our book launch party, not my book launch party, but my team's book launch party, because I now have a team. And so I think that there may be a type of person that when they hear me say, okay, my mom helps some, but I'm doing the rest, thinks, oh, she's trying to take the glory for herself. She wants to make it look like she does more than she does. She probably has people behind the scenes. And I'm over here like, I would love to be able to tell you That there are more people over here running the show than mostly me, really, truly. And it's only been in the last year that the Lord has brought those people along. And I now have my son who does the editing and producing of this podcast. That's the only way I'm able to do this podcast um, because the time that he spends on that is time that I simply don't have and would take way longer to do and am not interested in. It feels like anathema to me to think about doing the technical sides of this podcast. I'll do the talking. Thank you very much. I have an assistant that works with me for social media that I've had for about, oh, six or seven months. Of course, I have Sean and he and I are a great team and always have been. And he's able to be more and more involved with Emma's for Mama. Um, He co-wrote part of Heart is Not the Same Thing as Bad. If you don't know that yet, he has a part at the end of the chapters called Dad Thoughts. And we're definitely hoping to collaborate more in writing projects in the future, or at least I am. And he is willing. (laughs) And then... Um, I also have my unicorn and she listens to this podcast. So hi, Becca. Um, And I just wanted to say that even though y'all don't know her personally, and so I realize when people give shout outs to people that they don't know, it it doesn't have much of an effect because you're like, I'll just take your word for it. This is a great person. But I just want to encourage you when you're asking someone or you're thinking about this question, how does that person do it all? How do they pull that off? How are they juggling all those things? That one, the answer behind the scenes is probably they're not, they're dropping a lot of things or putting a lot of things aside or not getting to a lot of things and they're focusing on their strengths if they're doing it well and they're doing what the Lord is asking them to do. But they're also hoping for someone to come along that helps them to be able to have more bandwidth that helps them to be able to have more breathing room that really gets them and works well with them. And the Lord brought that person along for me about three or four months ago. It was actually, um, while we were in Europe and I I just want to encourage you that if you want to be this person for someone else, here are the steps (laughs) because this person had come to my first book launch party for Emma's for Mama. And I mentioned that the heart is not the same thing as bad book launch party is looming and that I have a team that's working on it and how incredible that is because a year and a half ago when I did the prep for the Emma's for Mama book launch party, it was my best friend, Lindsay and I, 
and she is another person on my team, but we work together in a different capacity as business partners and best friends through a business called Paint and Prose. And then she does the illustration for my art. So she's not as involved in the Emma's for Mama ministry, but she is my ride or die. So I should definitely put her in there as an honorable mention. But uh, we did the whole preparation for the Emma's for Mama book launch party. And it was a massive amount of work. And it was during a really busy season of my life. And I remember thinking, man, it would be so nice to have someone come alongside and do some of these details that just need someone with organization and a little bit of time on their hands who wants to make some money and get this stuff done. And I just really didn't have anybody quite like that, that I could find at that time. And again, the Lord was just saying, not yet, not yet. I don't have the right person for you. And I didn't know that he ever would. But this time, as I'm going into the Heart is Not the Same Thing as Bad book launch party, and I have someone that is going to basically run the party for me, instead of my feeling like I have to sign books and speak and interact with people, but also keep in mind, okay, now we need to do this, and now this needs to happen, and I need to communicate with that person. I'm not going to have to do that this time. And that's because this person at the first book launch party, her name is Becca, she stayed afterwards with her sister. And she helped clean up and that made a huge impression on me. And she was kind and she made eye contact and she made good conversation with my daughter, Della, who was there at the book launch party. And she showed initiative and interest and was just a kind, easy person to talk to. Well, that, that was, I told you, if you want to be this type of person for someone else, if you've ever wanted to be a virtual assistant or to be someone's right-hand person, show unsolicited interest in what they're doing. And look to be a blessing and a help to them, even if you're not getting paid for that, or if you don't ever know that it'll lead somewhere. And then the same person would send encouraging messages through social media. She was funny. She was well-written. She was easy to talk to. And I enjoyed getting to know her more on social media. And then this last spring, when I had a speaking event a couple of hours away, she came to all three of my sessions. She spoke with me in between. She expressed interest in coming to the next book launch party and said, if you need any help, let me know. And I knew that she meant it. And I think you know the kind of person where lots of people offer to help and maybe they sort of kind of mean it, but they're kind of hoping you don't take them up on it. And then there's that kind of person that looks you in the eye and says, I will be there. I will do whatever you need me to do. And she was talking about unpaid work and she wanted to be included because she believed in what it is that I do. And she supported me already. And then she took it to the next level by bringing me a bag of goodies for my family um, she brought some cookies that were themed with the cover of Emma's for Mama. They were arranged in order of our kids' names down from oldest to youngest. She had them all spelled correctly. That's attention to detail right there. Um, an organization. And she had written me a kind handwritten note. And guys, this could be creepy. And I know that if she's listening, she's laughing. But it wasn't. She struck just the right tone of encouragement and kindness and camaraderie without fangirling or without being um, creepy or stalkerish or anything like that. And it made such a huge impression on me that someone would go to the effort to be a blessing and an encouragement to someone that they didn't even know that well. So as I was thinking, okay, it's so nice that I have this person that helps me with social media and I have Ezra and I have Sean, but I still haven't found my unicorn Lord. I haven't found this person that, and by unicorn, I simply mean, it seems like they're probably not real. It seems like I'm asking for too much. It seems like the things that I am hoping for are unlikely to be found in just one person. And yet that's what I kept praying for. I kept praying for the Lord to answer the desires of my heart for this one person to be able to tick a lot of boxes, maybe not all of them, but a lot. And as I was praying about that, Becca came to mind and I talked to Sean and he said, sure, pitch the idea to her. And I did. And she came back and here's what she told me. And guys, this is a podcast about how do you do it all? And I'm telling you, I don't. And I'm telling you how I'm able to do more now and how grateful I am for, for who the Lord brought along. But I also just want to encourage you that the Lord's timing is so perfect and his ways are better than our ways. And she told me that she had been praying about a way to have some part-time income I think the day before I contacted her and what felt to me like it should have been completely out of the blue was instead an answer to prayer for her. And wow, what a confirmation that we are going down the right path. 
And so she's worked for me for about three months, like I said, three or four months. I've lost track of time at this point, but we were in um, Europe from May to June, and then we've got July and August. Yeah, we're going on four months. And she has been such an incredible blessing in my life in the way that she has done the things that my heart was yearning for someone to do, that she is taking initiative, that she's noticing things that need fixing without my telling her, that she's looking for solutions, that she's fine-tuning clunky processes that I had because they weren't my forte, that she is good at clearing out inboxes when I'm terrible at it, that she has such a balance to my weaknesses and she has such a support for my strengths. So I'm happy to tell you that not only do I not do it all, but a whole lot of the things that I'm able to do now, somewhat recently, are in large part due to the fact that the Lord finally answered my prayers for help and he brought them along at the right time because I will tell you completely honestly that so many of the things that I have been able to do this summer and this fall have been because it wasn't all on me. And so much of the support that I felt like I've had during this stressful season of book launch and starting homeschooling again and flood and travel and several other things that really aren't worth mentioning but are definite contributing factors to stress, so much of my ability to go through those without feeling like my head is about to pop off is because I have help now and because I don't have to do it all and because I am not an island. Praise God. So I feel like I'm always encouraging you to say, Lord, please give me the desires of my heart, but also make me content with where I am. Lord, you are enough. Um, And both are true. It's yes and. Yes, I would love help, Lord, and you are enough. Um, Yes, I would love to be more productive in this season. And I understand that you are limiting me because I have a newborn or a sick kid or a husband who's working away from home or, 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 or fill in the blank with your own limiting, quote unquote, limiting circumstance. So I think we're asking the wrong question when we say, how do you do it all? I think the question is better worded. What is it that the Lord has you doing right now? And how is he meeting you where you need to be met? And if he isn't meeting you there yet, How can I pray for you? What are you praying for? What are the desires of your heart? Because we may not get them for a while. I'm telling you, I prayed for the kind of help that I have now in the capacity in which I'm able to do some of this book writing and book launching and podcasting and all that stuff for years. And I'm I'm beyond grateful. I'm beyond thrilled. I'm beyond surprised still. That the Lord finally said yes, not because he doesn't give good gifts, but because sometimes he really does show himself to be so faithful in those areas where you think you can't do another step and he carries you. So hopefully this encourages you. Hopefully this helps you to keep going in the quote, it all that the Lord has for you, knowing that nobody does everything. And the people sometimes that are doing so many things aren't doing them very well because they're not really focusing where the Lord has them and that you are much better off relying on his strength in the areas, in the ability, in the capacity, in the season that he has you in than in striving for something that someone else is doing or that you're not even supposed to be doing. If you enjoyed the MS for Mama podcast, I would be so honored if you would subscribe and follow along, maybe share with friends or even leave a review. And if you want more content on motherhood and biblical responses to cultural issues, be sure to follow along on Instagram at m.is.4.mama.